In this video we're going to be looking at adaptations. These are characteristics which make an organism suited to the environment in which it lives. And there are three different types of adaptations. The first one are structural adaptations or physical adaptations. Now these are actual structures that you can see. So that, and they may be on the outside of an organism or they may be on the inside of an organism. So you can either point to it and say, oh, yeah, there it is, or you could cut it up and point to it. An example of this is the long manes that male lions have. And the advantage of them having this is so when they're in a fight, they can puff out their chests or the, their mane and they appear larger to and more intimidating to opponents. So this is a structural adaptation that you can look at it and see it. Physiological adaptations or functional adaptations are a little bit harder to pin down because you can't actually see it, but it's as to how the body of the organism works on a cellular level. So an example of this would be camels. Camels live out in the desert where there's not very much water. So they've evolved to conserve water by producing very, very concentrated urine. Now you wouldn't be able to cut open the kidneys of a camel and point to it and say, oh, that's it makes the concentrated urine. Uh, but it's how those structures actually work and operate down on that cellular level. And lastly, we have behavioural adaptations. And these are just changes in which uh, an animal or a plant acts. And some of these behavioural adaptations are natural, so they're innate, and some are developed over the lifetime. So they've maybe taught from uh, one generation to another or learned by one organism. And so an example of this is squirrels. Uh, they collect nuts and food during the good months or good seasons and they store it so that they've got something to eat when food's scarce like in the winter. So that is something that they do, so behaviour, uh, that makes them adapted to the environment in which they live. When we look at adaptations it's very hard for us to look at something and say, oh, yeah, that means that it's suited to the environment because of that. Um, one of the things, or the confounding variables, the things that makes this tricky, is that the, this thing that they have might actually have been an adaptation to an environment where its very distant ancestors lived in the past. Uh, so an example of this would be looking at a, the human appendix. It's not something that we use anymore. It's a vestigial structure. So you wouldn't be able to point to that, the appendix and say, oh, that uh, helps you do something now because there's nothing that we use it for. So in animals, this is the same. You can't point to something and say, oh, it must be uh, an adaptation for this environment. It could be just something that's been passed down over the generations and just happens to be there still. And even for adaptations which are quite obvious adaptations, it can be really hard to pin down why they have that adaptation and what makes that adaptation uh, or what in that adaptation makes them suited to their environment. An example of this is a giraffe having a long neck. It was thought for many years that giraffes had long necks so that they could reach the uh, higher up in the trees and that they could eat uh, that those leaves that other animals couldn't get to. Uh, but we later discovered that this isn't true because not uh, most of the time giraffes will eat, eat off the ground. So they've quite obviously got an adaptation that other animals don't have, but working out why they have that adaptation is a little bit tricky.